The muscular human exploded out of the cryopod, his eyes wild and fists clenched, sending the shocked alien scientist stumbling back in panic. Primus knew in that terrifying instant, as the humans scanned the room like a cornered predator, that they had made a grave mistake waking this primitive being from its frozen slumber. Just moments before, an excited energy had filled the Iconian research vessel Inquirer as it approached the ancient, derelict human sleeper ship drifting in the void. Primus and his team had waited their whole careers for a chance to study the elusive, recently discovered humans up close. The sleeper ship, a relic from the early days of Earth's expansion, housed hundreds of humans, perfectly preserved in cryopods, their bodies held in suspended animation for centuries as their ship drifted far off course. Despite the warnings of his colleague Zilthex that reanimating even one of the humans could irreparably damage the outdated pods and cause a cascading failure that would kill the hundreds of vulnerable sleeping humans, Primus could not resist the opportunity to be the first to interview a living human. But as the muscular man rose from the pod, his imposing posture and the Earth Defense Force's insignia on his uniform filling the slender Iconians with dread, Primus realized he had doomed them all by unleashing this uncontrollable being. The enraged human would no doubt slaughter Primus and his colleagues, hijack their ship, and hunt down everyone they loved, and there was nothing the physically weaker Iconians could do to stop him. Their only hope was that the human might show mercy if they could make him understand they meant no harm to his sleeping brethren, whose lives now were on the line. James lashed out, his fist connecting with the jaw of the closest alien. The scientist crumpled to the floor, blue blood oozing from his mouth. Another Iconian lunged at James, trying to wrap its spindly arms around him in a restraining hold. James grabbed the alien by the wrist and hurled it into a bank of monitors with a sickening crunch. Stay back, James bellowed, his eyes darting around the room as he tried to make sense of his surroundings. Strange equipment and screens flashed incomprehensible symbols. He had no idea where he was or how he got here. Primus scrambled back from the advancing human, his heart pounding in his chest. He slammed his hand onto a glowing panel on the wall. Intruder alert in specimen lab, he shouted into the comm. We need backup now. A calm female voice responded. Sealing specimen lab, security team dispatched, ETA 30 seconds. Heavy blast doors slid down over the entrances, with a resounding boom trapping them inside with the enraged human. James whirled to face Primus. What the hell is going on? Where am I? he growled, taking a menacing step forward. Start talking, bug man. Primus raised his hands in a gesture of surrender, fumbling for the translator on his belt with trembling fingers. Please, remain calm, he said, his words converted into English by the device. You are aboard a research vessel. We discovered your ship and revived you from cryogenic suspension. James narrowed his eyes. What do you mean you revived me? How long was I out? The pounding of boots echoed in the corridor outside, and a stern voice crackled over the intercom. Alien, release your hostage and surrender immediately, or we will use lethal force. James snatched Primus by the front of his coat and yanked him close. Tell them to back off or I'll snap your scrawny neck. Primus swallowed hard, the human's breath hot on his face. Please, there's no need for violence. Lower your weapon and let's talk. No one needs to get hurt. James glanced around the lab, his tactical mind noting the lack of viable escape routes. He needed more information and a hostage to buy time. He dragged Primus over to a corner, using an overturned table as cover, while keeping the alien in front of him as a shield. All right, talk, James ordered. What year is it? What happened to my ship and crew? Primus licked his lips nervously. The year is 3245 by your calendar. You and your crewmates have been in cryosleep for nearly 700 years. When we found your vessel, it had drifted far off course. We meant you no harm, only to study your people and perhaps establish peaceful contact. James felt like he'd been punched in the gut. 700 years. Everyone he knew would be long dead. Earth might not even exist anymore. His mind reeled as he tried to process it all, his grip on Primus loosening slightly. The alien scientist watched him carefully, 
hoping the human might listen to reason, yet fearing what desperate action he might take next. James's grip slackened as Primus's words sank in. Seven hundred years. The number echoed in his mind, his world tilting on its axis. In that moment of shock, Primus wrenched free of James's grasp. The scientist lunged for a control panel on the wall, his fingers flying over the glowing buttons. A shimmering force field sprang to life around James with a low hum. He snapped back to the present, rage and confusion surging through him. James slammed his fists against the energy barrier, testing its strength. The field crackled and held. Primus sagged against the wall, his chest heaving. He eyed James warily through the translucent barrier, gathering himself. Please, you must listen, Primus said, his voice trembling slightly. The Earth Defense Forces you knew, no longer exist. Humanity has spread out across the galaxy in the centuries since you went into cryosleep. James stilled, his mind racing. He tried to process the alien's words, to make them fit into his understanding of the world. What about the Iconian Empire? he asked hoarsely. Have you been at war with Earth? Primus shook his head. No, our two species have had minimal contact. We've largely stayed in our own regions of space. There is no conflict between us that I know of. James clenched his jaw, a muscle ticking in his cheek. He needed answers, needed to know what had happened. My crew, he said, his voice rough. The mission. What happened to them? Primus hesitated, glancing at the sealed doors. The security team was still out there, no doubt growing impatient. He looked back at James. Seeing the desperation in the human's eyes, Primus made a choice. I propose a deal, Primus said carefully. The technology of your ship, the cryopods, it's ancient to us. Help us understand it. Share your knowledge. In exchange, I give you my word. I will find out everything I can about the fate of your crew and your world. James weighed his options, his gaze flicking from Primus to the force field and back. He was trapped and outnumbered in a strange time and place. Cooperating with the bug-eyed alien might be his only path forward. Fine, James said tersely. I'll help you, but if you're lying to me... He let the unspoken threat hang in the air. Primus nodded, his relief palpable. He tapped a command into the control panel and the force field vanished. James tensed, ready to spring into action again, but held himself back. The doors hissed open and the security team burst in, Weapons leveled at James. Primus held up a hand, putting himself between them and the human. Stand down, he ordered. The situation is under control. The guards exchanged uncertain looks but lowered their weapons. James and Primus regarded each other across the lab, an uneasy truce forming between the man out of time and the alien scientist. The future, for both of them, was filled with unknowns. James followed Primus into the ship's laboratory, the doors sliding shut behind them with a hiss. The room was filled with sleek, unfamiliar equipment, holographic displays flickering with data streams. Primus gestured to a workstation. This is where we can begin analyzing the data from your ship's systems. James nodded, stepping up to the console. His fingers hovered over the glowing interface, uncertain. Primus noticed his hesitation. Is something wrong? I'm not used to this kind of technology, James admitted. Everything on the sleeper ship was much more analog. Primus smiled reassuringly. Don't worry, I'll guide you through it. Your first-hand experience with those systems is crucial, even if they seem primitive to us now. As they worked, James could feel the weight of suspicious gazes from the other Iconian scientists. Whispered conversations halted abruptly when he drew near, and more than one hand strayed toward a weapon when he made any sudden moves. The door to the lab opened and the ship's captain strode in, flanked by two armed guards. Primus straightened. Captain Zylock, I didn't expect... A word, Primus, Zylock interrupted. His eyes flicked to James. Alone! Primus followed the captain into the corridor. James strained to hear their muffled voices through the door. Allowing a primitive being access... Valuable knowledge we can't ignore. Dangers of... The argument grew heated, the captain's voice rising. 
James tensed, ready for a confrontation. But after a long moment, Primus returned alone. He looked troubled. Is everything all right? James asked. Just a difference of opinion on how to proceed, Primus said. He shook his head as if clearing it. Let's get back to work. Tell me more about this classified mission you mentioned. James hesitated, years of training warring with his need for answers. It was called Project Exodus, he said finally. A fail-safe colony, hidden away in case of catastrophe. Earth had been exploring deeper into space, and not every species we encountered was friendly. He called up an image of the sleeper ship on the display. Only a few ships were built with this experimental cryo-sleep technology. It was supposed to keep the crew in suspended animation until the ship reached its destination. His voice roughened. Looks like something went wrong. Indeed, Primus said. The pod suffered a cascading malfunction at some point. You're lucky to have survived. James closed his eyes briefly, grief for his lost crewmates washing over him. Then he refocused on Primus. So this colony, Arcadia, if we can find its location, there might be other survivors, other humans. Primus nodded slowly. It's possible, but the galaxy is a big place. Without the original navigation data, it has to be in the ship's system somewhere, James insisted. I just need to keep looking. As they pored over star charts and data logs, James found himself warming to the inquisitive alien scientist. Primus was patient, explaining the dizzying changes in galactic politics and technology that had occurred while James slept. In turn, James shared stories of Earth's history, the struggles and triumphs of his species. A chime from the console interrupted their discussion. Primus frowned at the incoming message, then blanched. This is a communication from Commander Zoran of the Vanguard faction. He's demanding we turn over the human and all data from the sleeper ship. Turn me over? James tensed. Why? The Vanguard are a radical offshoot, obsessed with Iconian supremacy, Primus explained grimly. It seems they've intercepted our transmissions. If they've learned of this hidden human colony... A cold knot formed in James's gut. The Vanguard sounded an awful lot like the aggressive species that had necessitated Project Exodus in the first place. If they found Arcadia before he did... James clenched his fists, an all-too-familiar feeling of protectiveness and determination rising in his chest. He had a new mission now. Find Arcadia, secure its safety, and make damn sure the Vanguard never got their hands on it. He met Primus's worried gaze. Looks like we need to work faster. Commander Zoran's face filled the viewscreen, his features twisted with contempt. Primus, he spat, you have something that belongs to me. Primus straightened his spine. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, Commander. Don't play games with me. Zoran's eyes narrowed. The human, the sleeper ship, I know you have them. James stepped into view, his jaw set. I don't belong to anyone, pal. Zoran's gaze flicked to James, a sneer curling his lip. The primitive speaks how quaint. Primus interjected. Commander, this is a peaceful research mission. We have no quarrel with you or the vanguard. Spare me your lies, Zoran hissed. I have my orders. The High Command has authorized me to take control of this situation. James glanced at Primus, who shook his head subtly. Something wasn't right here. I'll need to verify that with the High Command, Primus said carefully. In the meantime, I must insist that you maintain your distance. Zoran barked a harsh laugh. You have one hour to comply. If you do not surrender the human and all your data, I will take them by force. The screen went black. Primus sagged, his mind racing. James gripped his shoulder. He's lying about the High Command, isn't he? Primus nodded grimly. Zoran has a reputation for ruthlessness and a deep hatred of humans. If he gets his hands on you or the location of your colony... So what do we do? James asked. We need to protect the data, Primus said, and ourselves. James's eyes lit up. The sleeper ship, it has defense systems. Primus frowned. Those systems are centuries old. We can't rely on them. Do we have a choice? James pressed.
Primus hesitated, then shook his head. I suppose not. Let's go. They raced through the corridors, ignoring the startled looks from the crew. In the hangar, the sleeper ship loomed, a relic from a bygone age. James ran his hands over the controls, his muscle memory taking over. I think I can get the weapons online. Primus watched in amazement as James coaxed the ancient systems to life. Lights flickered on, consoles humming with power. We've got company, James said, pointing to the sensor display. Zoran's ship was closing fast. Primus hailed the bridge. Captain, we need you to stall Zoran. Buy us some time. Acknowledged, came the terse reply. James's fingers flew over the controls. Weapons are hot. We'll only get one shot at this. On the view screen, Zoran's ship filled the frame, weapons bristling. Fire! James yelled. A barrage of missiles streaked from the sleeper ship, catching Zoran's vessel off guard. The shields flared, absorbing the impact, but the ship rocked under the assault. Zoran's face appeared contorted with rage. You'll pay for that human scum. But James was already launching another volley, targeting the ship's engines. Explosions bloomed, and Zoran's vessel listed, smoke pouring from the hull. Retreat, Zoran bellowed, his image flickering. This isn't over. As the enemy ship limped away, the crew of the research vessel erupted in cheers. James sat back, a grim smile on his face. Primus clasped his shoulder. That was incredible. I've never seen anyone handle a ship like that. James shrugged. I had a good teacher. The moment of celebration was short-lived. They still needed to decipher the location of the hidden colony, and Zoran would undoubtedly return with reinforcements. James and Primus exchanged a determined look. They had bought themselves some time. Now they had to use it wisely. The fate of the colony and perhaps the entire galaxy hung in the balance. James's fingers flew across the console, lines of data scrolling past on the screen. He and Primus had been working non-stop, poring over the sleeper ship's archives for any clue that might lead them to the hidden colony. Suddenly James froze, his eyes widening. Primus, look at this! He pointed to a block of text, his voice tight with excitement and disbelief. Project Nexus. It says the colony wasn't just a backup plan, it was a research outpost, studying some kind of alien artifact. Primus leaned in, his brow furrowed as he read the file. The Nexus, he murmured. According to these records, it has the power to bend space and time. He looked up at James, his expression grave. An object like that could be used as a terrible weapon if it fell into the wrong hands. James nodded, his jaw clenched. We can't let that happen. We have to find the colony and secure the Nexus before anyone else does. Suddenly the ship shuddered violently, throwing them off balance. Alarms blared, red lights flashing. James grabbed the console to steady himself. What's going on? Primus pulled up the external sensors, his eyes widening in horror. It's Zoran. He's attacking the ship. On the screen, a fleet of Vanguard ships swarmed around the research vessel, weapons blazing. Explosions rocked the hull, the shield straining under the onslaught. James's mind raced, adrenaline surging through his veins. We have to get out of here. If Zoran gets his hands on this data... Primus nodded, his fingers already flying over the controls. There's a shuttle bay on the lower deck. If we can reach it, we might be able to escape. They sprinted through the corridors, the ship shuddering and groaning around them as Zoran's attack intensified. Crew members rushed past, shouting orders and warnings. In the shuttle bay... James and Primus quickly prepped a small craft, loading the critical data into its computer. Just as they sealed the hatch, a massive explosion tore through the hangar. The force field flickered and died, exposing them to the vacuum of space. James punched the thrusters and the shuttle shot out of the bay, narrowly avoiding the debris field that had once been the research vessel. On the sensors, Zoran's ships loomed, closing in fast. Hang on! James gritted his teeth, throwing the shuttle into a wild corkscrew. Laser fire streaked past, barely missing them. Primus clung to his seat, his eyes wide. We can't outrun them forever. James's gaze flicked to the star chart, an idea forming. We don't have to. 
We just have to reach that nebula cluster. He pointed to a swirling mass of gas and dust. The interference should hide us from their sensors. With a burst of speed, the shuttle plunged into the nebula, vanishing from Zoran's scanners. James let out a shaky breath, his heart pounding. They had escaped, but only just. In the eerie silence of the nebula, the weight of their discovery settled over them. James stared out at the swirling colours, his mind reeling. The nexus, the hidden colony, the fate of his crew. It was all connected. And now the responsibility of unravelling those secrets fell on his shoulders. Primus placed a hand on James's arm, his expression solemn. I know this is a lot to take in, he said softly. But you're not alone. I'll help you find the truth, no matter the cost. James met Primus's gaze, a flicker of gratitude piercing through his grief and confusion. In this strange new world, he had found an unlikely ally. Together they would face the challenges ahead and uncover the mysteries that could change the course of the galaxy. James and Primus navigated through the swirling nebula, the vibrant colours casting an eerie glow inside the small shuttle. The weight of their discovery hung heavy in the air, the knowledge that the Nexus could change the course of the galaxy. James stared out at the cosmic dance, lost in thought. Primus broke the silence. I know it's a lot to process, but we'll figure this out together. Suddenly the shuttle's sensors pinged. An unknown vessel was approaching. James tensed, his hand hovering over the controls. Could it be Zoran? As the ship drew closer, a voice crackled over the comm. Greetings, travellers, we mean you no harm. The vessel that emerged from the nebula was unlike anything James had ever seen. Sleek and angular, it seemed to shimmer with an otherworldly energy. Primus gasped. It can't be. The Quillari, they're just a myth. The voice spoke again. We have been observing your journey. We know of the Nexus and the Hidden Colony. We wish to help. Cautiously, James and Primus allowed the Quillari ship to dock with their shuttle. They were greeted by a tall, ethereal being with luminous eyes and skin that seemed to shift and change like quicksilver. I am Varasir, emissary of the Quillari. For millennia, we have been the guardians of the Nexus, protecting it from those who would abuse its power. James stepped forward. The Nexus, what exactly is it? Varasir's gaze was ancient and knowing. It is a key, a bridge between worlds. In the right hands, it could unlock the secrets of the universe. In the wrong hands, it could bring destruction on an unimaginable scale. Primus's eyes widened. And you think we're the right hands? Varasir smiled enigmatically. We have seen your hearts, James and Primus. You seek to protect, not to conquer. We will guide you to the hidden colony and help you safeguard the Nexus. As they followed the Quillari ship through the nebula, James couldn't shake the feeling that their journey was about to take an even more unexpected turn. Suddenly, alarms blared. Zoran's fleet had found them, thanks to a tracking device planted on their shuttle. James cursed. We need to lose them! Need to... A fierce battle erupted, laser fire crisscrossing the void of space. James drew upon every ounce of his combat training, weaving the shuttle through the chaos. Primus worked frantically to boost their shields and jam Zoran's sensors. The Quil'ari ship darted and spun, its advanced weaponry making short work of Zoran's fighters. But Zoran had one last card to play. A massive energy surge erupted from his flagship, a wave of destruction that threatened to engulf everything in its path. James's heart seized as he realized the terrible truth. The hidden colony, the Nexus, Primus, and the Quil'ari would all be obliterated, Unless... James's hand closed around the shuttle's controls, his jaw set with grim determination. He knew what he had to do. The lives of countless beings hung in the balance. The Nexus could not fall into Zoran's hands. Even if it meant sacrificing everything, James would not let that happen. James's mind raced as he stared at the approaching wave of destruction. The shuttle shook violently as the energy surge drew closer, threatening to engulf them all. He glanced at Primus and the Quillari, their faces etched with fear and determination. In that moment, 
a spark of inspiration ignited within him. The Nexus, James said, his voice steady despite the chaos around them. We can use it to stop Zoran's weapon. Primus's eyes widened. How? We don't even fully understand its power. James turned to Varisir. You said the Nexus is a bridge between worlds, that it can bend space and time. What if we could create a localized distortion, a pocket that could swallow the energy and redirect it back at Zoran? Varisir considered for a moment, then nodded. It might work, but it would require precise control and timing. Then let's do it, James said, already moving towards the Nexus chamber. Primus and Varisir followed close behind, their steps hurried but purposeful. As they entered the chamber, the Nexus pulsed with an otherworldly light, as if sensing the urgency of their mission. James placed his hands on the artifact, feeling its power thrumming beneath his fingertips. Primus and Varisir took their positions on either side, their own hands hovering over the Nexus's surface. Focus your thoughts, Varisir instructed. Visualize the distortion, the pocket of space-time we need to create. James closed his eyes, his mind reaching out to the Nexus. He could feel Primus and Varisir's consciousnesses intertwining with his own, their combined will shaping the artifact's energy. The Nexus began to glow brighter, its light spilling out into the chamber. James could feel the fabric of reality warping around them, a localized distortion forming just beyond the shuttle's hull. Now, James shouted, as the wave of destruction reached its crescendo. The Nexus pulsed, and the distortion expanded, swallowing the energy surge just before it could reach the shuttle. For a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath as the destructive force was drawn into the pocket of space-time. Then, with a blinding flash, the distortion collapsed, redirecting the energy back towards Zoran's fleet. The ships erupted in a cascade of explosions, their hulls crumpling under the onslaught of their own weapon. James, Primus and Varisir watched in stunned silence as Zoran's fleet fell apart, the remnants of his once mighty armada retreating into the depths of space. We did it, Primus breathed, his voice a mix of relief and awe. James nodded, a grim smile on his face. But we're not done yet. We still need to reach the colony and secure the Nexus. As they navigated through the debris field left by Zoran's destroyed ships, James couldn't shake the feeling that their journey was far from over. The Nexus hummed softly in its chamber, a reminder of the power they now held in their hands. The hidden colony loomed before them, a sprawling network of domes and spires nestled in the heart of a lush alien world. James felt a surge of emotion as they touched down on the landing pad, the realization that he was about to meet the descendants of his crewmates, hitting him like a physical blow. As they disembarked, a welcoming party approached, led by a woman with piercing green eyes and a confident stride. She extended her hand to James, a warm smile on her face. Welcome to New Earth, James. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Reeves, leader of the colony. We've been expecting you. James shook her hand, his mind reeling. How did you know we were coming? Dr. Reeves smiled enigmatically. The Nexus told us. We've been studying it for generations, learning to harness its power. As she led them through the colony, James marveled at the advancements they had made. The technology was unlike anything he had seen before, a seamless blend of human ingenuity and alien wisdom. In the central research facility, Dr. Reeves revealed the true extent of their work. The Nexus is more than just a powerful artifact, she explained, her eyes shining with excitement. It has the potential to change everything, energy production, interstellar travel, even the very nature of reality itself. James and Primus exchanged a glance, the weight of this revelation sinking in. As they delved deeper into the colony's research, working alongside Dr. Reeves and the Quilari, they began to uncover tantalizing hints about the Nexus's origins and the ancient civilization that had created it. But their work was suddenly interrupted by a chilling announcement from the colony's security team. Zoran, it seemed, had survived the destruction of his fleet and had managed to infiltrate the colony with a group of loyal followers. As alarms blared and the colonists scrambled to defend their home, James knew that the final battle for the Nexus was about to begin. And this time, 
the stakes were higher than ever before. James and Primus raced through the colony's corridors, their hearts pounding as they closed in on the central chamber where the Nexus was held. They burst through the doors, weapons drawn, only to find Zoran already there, his hand outstretched towards the shimmering artifact. Zoran! James shouted, his voice echoing off the chamber's walls. Step away from the Nexus! Zoran turned, a cruel smile twisting his features. Ah, James, the primitive human who thinks he can stand in the way of destiny, don't you see? The Nexus is the key to everything. Power, immortality, dominion over the galaxy itself. Primus stepped forward, his eyes narrowed. You're mad, Zoran. The Nexus isn't meant to be controlled or exploited. It's a force for good, for protection and guidance. Zoran laughed, a harsh grating sound. You're both fools. I will claim the Nexus, and with its power, I will reshape the galaxy in my image. With a roar, Zoran lunged for the Nexus, his fingers closing around its pulsing surface. James and Primus charged, weapons blazing, as the chamber erupted into chaos. Meanwhile, Dr. Reeves and the Quillari worked feverishly at the colony's research terminals, their fingers flying over the controls as they sought to unravel the Nexus's final secrets. There, Dr. Reeves exclaimed, her eyes widening in amazement. The Nexus, it's not just an artifact, it's alive, a sentient being of immense power. Varasir, the Quillari leader, nodded sagely. The Nexus was created by our ancestors, a guiding force meant to protect and nurture the younger races of the galaxy. Suddenly, the Nexus began to pulse with a brilliant light, its energy washing over the chamber in waves. James felt a surge of power coursing through his body, his senses heightening as the Nexus reached out to him. James, a voice whispered in his mind, ancient and powerful, you have been chosen. Wield my power and protect the galaxy from those who would do it harm. With a cry of determination, James launched himself at Zoran, their bodies colliding in a titanic struggle. Primus and the Quil'ari joined the fray, their weapons and technology working in tandem to weaken Zoran's defences. As the battle raged on, James and Zoran traded blows, their strength and speed enhanced by the Nexus's power. The chamber shook with the force of their conflict, debris raining down from the ceiling. Suddenly Zoran gained the upper hand, his blade slicing through the air towards James's heart. Time seemed to slow as Primus threw himself forward, his body absorbing the fatal blow meant for his friend. James screamed in anguish, his grief and rage fueling a final, devastating assault. With a burst of blinding light, he struck Zoran down, the Iconian's lifeless body crumpling to the floor. As the dust settled, the Nexus pulsed once more, its form shifting and shimmering until it resolved into a being of pure energy, radiant and awe-inspiring. It spoke, its voice resonating through the minds of all present. You have done well, champions of life, it said, its words filled with ancient wisdom. Now let me share with you the knowledge and secrets of the civilization that created me, so that you may guide the galaxy towards a brighter future. James knelt beside Primus's fallen form, tears streaming down his face, as the Nexus began to impart its vast knowledge, a bittersweet victory in the face of his friend's sacrifice. James stood amidst the ruins of the colony, the weight of the battle heavy on his shoulders. The scent of smoke and charred metal hung in the air, a grim reminder of the destruction that had taken place. The Quil'ari moved through the debris, with a grace that belied their alien nature, their shimmering forms a stark contrast to the grim surroundings. Dr. Reeves approached James, her face streaked with soot and sweat. We've lost a lot, but we're still here. The Nexus is safe, and that's what matters. James nodded, his gaze distant. The Nexus pulsed softly in his mind, a constant presence that both comforted and unsettled him. But at what cost? he asked, his voice raw with emotion. The Nexus stirred, its energy washing over James in a gentle wave. Images flashed through his mind, a galaxy at peace, races united in common purpose, a future bright with promise. But there were shadows too, whispers of challenges yet to come, sacrifices that would be demanded. 
James closed his eyes, letting the visions wash over him. When he opened them again, there was a new resolve in his gaze. We have to rebuild, he said, his voice steady. Not just the colony, but the galaxy. The Nexus has shown me what's possible, but it won't be easy. Dr. Reeves placed a hand on his shoulder. We're with you, James, every step of the way. As the days passed, the colony began to take shape once more. The Quilari worked tirelessly, their advanced technology making short work of the repairs. James found himself spending long hours with the Nexus, learning to harness its power and understand its secrets. But even as he threw himself into his new role, James could not shake the sense of loss that gnawed at his heart. Primus, his friend and ally, was gone, succumbed to his injuries sustained in the final battle, and with him, James realized, died the last link to his old life. One evening, as the twin moons of the colony hung low in the sky, James found himself standing before Primus's grave. The simple marker seemed inadequate to encapsulate the life of the brave Iconian scientist who had sacrificed everything for their cause. I miss you, my friend, James whispered, his voice thick with emotion. I wish you were here to see what we're building. The Nexus pulsed in response, a gentle reminder of the work that lay ahead. James squared his shoulders, ready to face the challenges that lay ahead. He had a new purpose now, a new family forged in the heat of battle and the bonds of shared purpose. As he turned to walk back to the colony, James caught sight of Dr. Reeves and a group of Quilari, deep in discussion over a set of schematics. They looked up as he approached, their expressions a mix of determination and hope. Are you ready, James? Dr. Reeves asked, her eyes shining with anticipation. James nodded, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Let's go save the galaxy, he said, his voice ringing with conviction. And with that, they set off into the unknown, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, armed with the power of the Nexus and the knowledge of the ancient civilization. The journey would be long and fraught with danger, but James knew that he was not alone. He had a new family now, bound by a shared purpose and an unbreakable resolve. Together, they would carry the legacy of humanity and the Nexus forward into a future full of promise and hope. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.